Hello, my students in grade seven. This is a new mathematics session. It's lecture eight and the title is Prime Numbers. This is the part one of our lesson in semester one, the academic year 2020-2021. The objectives of our lesson are, objective number one, we will define and learn prime numbers. So in this lesson, we will learn and know prime numbers. In objective number two, then we will identify another kind of numbers called the composite numbers. Objective number three, we will decompose a composite number into a product of a prime factors using a very important method called the prime factorization method. So what is a prime number? We know in mathematics that we have many numbers, but some of these numbers, we call them prime numbers. What is the definition of a prime numbers? So let's define first the prime numbers. Prime number is a number that can only be divided by one and itself. So any number that we can only divide it by one and itself, we call it a prime number. So a prime number has only two divisors. It doesn't have any other divisors. These two divisors are one and the number itself. For example, let's take the number 13. 13 is divided by one. So 13 divided by one gives us 13. 13 cannot be divided by two, cannot be divided by three or four or five. It cannot be divided by six or seven or eight or nine or 10. It cannot be divided by 11, nor by 12. 13 can be divided by 13. So it can be divided by itself. It gives us also one. So the number 13, we call it a prime number because it has only two divisors, one and 13. Also 11 can only be divided by one and 11. So also 11, we call it a prime number. The number five is also only divided by one and five. That's why we call five a prime number. What are the prime numbers till 100? Let us list all the prime numbers till 100 that are less than 100. The first prime number that we always start with is two. So two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, and 97. All these numbers are only divided by one and themselves. I want you to look at these numbers or at this list of numbers. Can you notice that the only even prime number in between these numbers is two? All the other prime numbers are odd, except two, it is the only even prime number. So let us stop here and say two important notices. Notice number one, Two is the only even prime number in between all the numbers. So in between all the prime numbers, two is the only even prime number. Zero and one, so the two numbers, zero and one are not prime numbers. So please keep this in mind. We have seen that prime numbers starting from 2 are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, etc. Now we're going to define together a composite number. A composite number is a number that has more than two divisors, one and itself. It has 
maybe it has a three divisors, four divisors, etc. For example, the number four has divisors one, two, and four. So four can be divided by one, it gives us four. Four divided by two, it gives us two. Four divided by four, it gives us one. Then we say that the number four is not a prime number, it's a composite number. Also, six has many divisors. It has one, two, three, and six as divisors. So it has one and itself, and in addition to one and itself, it also has two and three as divisors. Then we say that six is not a prime number. It is a composite number. 15 also has many divisors. The divisors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. So 15 is not a prime number, it is a composite number. Talking about a composite number, why do we call it composite? Because it has more than two divisors. And this number is characterized by something very important that a composite number can be decomposed into prime factors or it can be written as a prime factors. And we will learn in, the, in this lesson how can we decompose any composite number into prime factors. But before I continue talking about decomposition into prime factors, let me again remind you of the criteria of divisibility that you studied before in many years. These criteria of divisibilities tell us how can we know that a number is divisible by a specific number without performing the division. So a number is divisible by two if the ones in the number is even. So to know if a number is divisible by two, I directly look at the ones digit. If the ones digit is even, which means zero or two or four or six or eight, then this number is divisible by two. A number is divisible by three if the sum of digits of this number is a multiple of three. And a number is divisible by four if the ones and tens, so if we look at the ones and tens at the same time, if we found them a multiple of four, then this number is divisible by four. A number is divisible by five if the ones is zero or five. A number is divisible by six if it is divisible by the two numbers two and three at the same time. A number is divisible by nine if the sum of digits also is a multiple of nine. And a number is divisible by 10 if the ones digit is in this number is zero. Now let's practice prime and composite numbers in this table until the number 100. So let us practice these, uh, prime, these prime and composite numbers, okay? I will start now. Okay, let me take this away here. So in this table, I have all the numbers starting from one until 100. What I'm gonna do in this table is, I want to cross all the numbers that are not prime, and at the end, I will be left with all the prime numbers starting from one and ending with 100. First, we have a rule which say, that one is not a prime number, so I cross it. Sorry, so I cross, one is not a prime number, let me take the eraser. So one is not a prime number, I cross the number which is one. Now, where's the pen? Again, this is the mouse. So one is not a prime number, let me take the pen again. Two, where's the pen, the pen, the pen, the pen. Now two is a prime number, so I leave the number which is two. Now three, 
is also a prime number. So I leave three. Where's the pen? Okay. So three is a prime number. I leave it. We said a very important rule also that all the even numbers except two are not prime. So I cross four because it is even. I cross six because it is even. Eight is even, I cross it. 10 is even, I cross it. 12 is even, I cross it. 14 is even, I cross 14. So I will cross all the even numbers from this table because as we said before, we have a very important rule that all the even numbers except two are not prime. So we will cross all the even numbers. Let me cross all the even numbers until I arrive to 100. We know that the even numbers has in their ones either 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So I will cross here all the even numbers that are multiple, sorry, uh, let me erase it again. I did it by mistake. I will take the line again. So I will cross all the even numbers. 56 is even, 58 is even, uh, 60 is even, 62 is even. So 62 is even, 72 is even, 82 is even. I will cross all the even numbers, 92 is even, 64 is even, 74 even, 84 because the ones is 4, 94 also, 66 we cross it, 76, 86 also because the ones is even, uh, 68 is even, 78, 88, 98 is even, 70 is even, 80 is even, 90 is even, and 100 is even. So we crossed all the even numbers. Now, three is a prime number. As we said that three is a prime number, we leave it. So let us cross out all the multiples of three. They are not prime. We have nine as a multiple of three. We have 15 is a multiple of three, 19, 21 is a multiple of three, 23, 25, 27 is a multiple of three, 33 is a multiple of three, so we cross it. 39 is a multiple of three, 45 is a multiple of three, 51 is a multiple of three, uh, 57 is a multiple of three, 63 is a multiple of three, so here I am crossing all the multiples of three. 75 is a multiple of three. 81 is a multiple of three. Uh, 87 is a multiple of three. 93 is a multiple of three. 99 is a multiple of three. Five is also a prime number. So let's cross all the multiples of five. 25, I cross it because it's a multiple of five. 35, 55, I cross 65, I cross 85, and I cross 95 because all of these are multiples of five. Seven is a prime number, so let's, let's cross out all the multiples of seven. Seven, seven is prime, so we leave it. Let us cross all the multiples of seven. Whom do we have as multiples of seven? 49 is a multiple of seven. Uh, 61, no, 71. 77 is a multiple of seven. Let me see, 97 is a multiple of seven. Yes, 93, no, it's not a multiple of seven. Let me see if 93 is a multiple of seven. No, 97 is not a multiple of seven. 
So 97, uh, let me divide, 9 divided by 7 is 1, 2, no, it's not a multiple of 7. So we crossed out the multiples of 2, the multiples of 3, the multiples of 5, the multiples of 7. Now let's count all the prime numbers. 2, 3, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31. So here in this way, I got all the prime numbers that are less than 100. Okay, so this is how we get all the prime numbers less than 100. So again, I will erase all of these. I will leave it for you to practice it by yourselves. That's why I'm erasing, I'm erasing what I did before, just for you to practice. This is very easy and it will let you know what are all the multiples or uh, the multiples of numbers you will revise these and also you will know all the prime numbers that are less than 100. So now let me continue to the next slide. Now talking again about the composition of a composite number into product of prime factors. What am I saying here? I said that we have two kinds of numbers. We have the prime numbers that they are already prime and we have the composite numbers that has many divisors. These composite numbers, I will teach you a way to write them as a product of a prime factors. Yani, as I mean, as, pro, as prime factors multiplied together. So any composite number, any composite number given, it can be decomposed into a product of prime factors using prime factorization. What is the method of prime factorization? The method of prime factorization is very easy. To decompose any natural number into product of prime factors, we try to divide this number always starting from 2. So we try. It might be divisible by 2. It might not be divisible by 2. If we can divide it by 2, then we get the answer and we write it. If we cannot divide it by 2, we try to divide it by 3 and so on. So here, to, it helps us very much in division applying a criteria of divisibility by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10 that I talked before a moment. We finish the prime factorization when the answer of division at the end is 1. Let us make an example. So given the number 24, Let's decompose 24 into prime factors. So I write the number 24 and I draw a vertical line. I say, can we divide the 24 by 2? I look at the ones. Since the ones is 4, so it can be divisible by 2. So I write 2 on the other side of the vertical line. Now I say 24 divided 2 is 12. Now the answer 12 also, can we divide it by 2? Yes, because the ones is even, so I write 2. 12 divided by 2, the answer is 6. Also 6 is an even number, we can divide it by 2. So 6 divided by 2 in our mind, I get the answer 3, so I write the answer 3. 3, can we divide it by 2? Of course, 3 cannot be divided by 2. 3 can be divided by 3, it gives us 1. See now the answer of division here. This is the answer of division that I talked about. So the answer of division is 1. When the answer of division is 1, my prime factorization is done and I finished it. Here on this side, I have 2, 2, 2, and 3. These are the prime factors of 24. So here on this side, I shouldn't see a 4 or a 6 or a 9 or a 10. On this side, I shouldn't see a composite number. I should only see prime numbers or prime factors here. Now, 24 written as a product of prime factors, I write 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Because we have 2 3 times, so we write it 2 cubed 
times three. So always the prime factors of 24 are two cubed times three. As you can see, two is a prime and the three is a prime and they are product. Product, I mean, they are multiplied together. Let me give you another example of prime factorization. Now I want to do the prime factorization of 420. So here on this side, on the left side of the vertical line that I draw, I write the number 420. I start trying to divide 420 from 2. 420, can we divide it by 2? Yes, because the 1 is 0 and 0 is even. So we write 2 here and down under 420, I write the answer of division. Now you can ask me, or you might ask me, Miss, how can we get the answer? You might do the division on a draft or you might uh, divide it on using a calculator and getting the answer. So I got the answer 210. Also 210, can we divide it by two? Yes, because the ones is even. 210 divided by two is 105. Now the answer 105, can I divide it by two? No, because the ones is not even. Can we divide it by three? Let's see. One plus zero is one plus five is six and six is a multiple of three. So 105 can be divisible by three. So 105 divided by three is 35. Now 35 cannot be divided by two, cannot be divided by three, it can be divided by five. So 35 divided by five is seven. Seven is a prime number, so it can only be divided by seven. And the answer, the final answer is one. After I finish, here on the right side, I have all the prime factors of 420. So I write 420 equal. How many twos do we have? Two times. So I write two squared times a three times five times seven. So I multiply all the prime factors I got. So these are the prime factors of 420. Also, as an example, if I gave you the number 360, it can be divided by two. It gives us 180. 180 divided by two is 90. 90 divided by two is 45. 45 cannot be divided by two, it can be divided by three. If we divide 45 by three, it gives us 15. 15 divided by three is five. Five divided by five is one. When the final answer is one, so my decomposition is done. So we write 360 equal. How many twos do we have? One, two, three. So we write two cubed times. How many threes do we have? One, two, so I write three squared times. How many five do we have? One, so I write five. So these are the product of prime factors of the number 360. This was our lecture for this week, my dear students. Please watch the video, understand the concept of the lesson. It's very easy, but it's very important to know prime numbers and how can we decompose prime numbers into product of prime factors. Take care and uh, bye.